We're back here in the shop working on the Dark Arrow 1 prototype. Lately we've been working on installing the main gear. We have the whole aircraft inverted to do that. Let's find out why in today's video. Ooh. It looks a little funky right now. We're getting ready to bond in this bulkhead. This is called the drag link bulkhead. And this is one of the bulkheads that help tie the trunnion frame assembly into the rest of the fuselage. There's a bunch of bulkheads that it attaches to. These ones, the seat back, and this bulkhead were already installed. This is one that we uh, didn't finalize the design on until more recently. So once we had that figured out, we machined it out and now we can fish it in here. We've got it all masked off the, of the bond area where it's gonna go in and use a combination of painter's tape and, and just paper to mask it off so that we don't, we don't make too big of a mess as we're fishing this in here. And then you'll also notice there's a couple MDF positioning fixtures that we machined out. So those are used to establish the spacing on this, keeping it parallel to the other bulkheads and then at the right distance. And then we can just use a simple speed square here to square it up and make sure it's all aligned uh, perpendicular to the, the aft baggage floor here. Once this is bonded in and cured, we can install the training frame and then move on with the rest of the main gear installation. This is our final fit check of the trunnion frame before we start bonding it in. Right now we have it just dry fitted up. There's no adhesive in here. And what we're trying to do is just double check everything before we start applying adhesive and bonding this in. We've got our clamps installed. We're kind of confirming our clamping strategy. There's a whole bunch of bond area on this front face of the trunnion frame. So we were concerned about getting good clamping pressure there, uh, squeezing all that adhesive out. So we got lots of room to get clamps in here. And then we're gonna bond this in in multiple stages. So we got the trunnion frame going in first and then we'll bond in the inner trunnion frame pieces later. And then there's a bulkhead that goes right here, across here and then front to back. That one will get bonded in uh, at the same time as these inner trunnion frame pieces. And then ultimately we'll close it out with the aft fuselage skin. I think everything looks pretty good right now. We got masking tape applied all around all the bond areas to, to keep our adhesive in the right places. We'll take this apart, solvent wipe everything, and apply adhesive and then stick it back together and let it start curing. We have the trunnion frame bonded in place. And just to orient everyone with where we're looking at here, uh, the main gear would retract back here. So this is where the struts would fold. And then these are the wheel wells for the main gear wheels. So the wheels would come back in here and then the gear pivots up here. 
So this was a little bit of an iterative process installing all these parts. The reason we had to iterate on it was because we didn't have the gear to the final uh, design point when we did a lot of this fuselage work. And so we had to make modifications to install this trending frame. So we were fitting it up and doing fine tuned sanding tweaks to make sure that it fit the way we wanted. We did a bunch of alignment checks with everything, dry fitting it and then taking it apart and tweaking things to get it where we wanted. So we were checking uh, the alignment between the wing and the rest of the fuselage, making sure that the wing is perpendicular to the center line of the fuselage and that it's sitting in the right forward and aft position as well as uh, pitch and roll. So basically making sure that the wing is aligned to the fuselage on all axes. And we had to do that with all this uh, structure in place. So with the aft skin on, we did a bunch of dry fits with that. And then also with the training frame in place, we didn't want uh, the training frame sitting up high or low and then uh, throwing off the wing position because the skin here has to uh, fit underneath the lower wing skin and all come together. Where we're at now, we have all the bond areas masked off so that we can bond this aft skin in place. So masking tape in place to keep adhesive where we want it and make sure we're not smearing it where it doesn't need to be. We'll get the adhesive applied, remove the masking tape and stick the aft skin in place and then weight it down, clamp it in place and let it cure. We just got the aft skin bonded on, which is a huge milestone before we rotate the fuselage back over and try to get it mounted up onto the gear. You can see we still have the clamps in place, some sandbags weighting it down. So we still have to wait for this to cure. While we're waiting for it to cure, I thought it'd be fun to talk about this component that I have right here. There's actually two of them that we'll need, uh, one here and one over here. This allows us to mount the gear into the fuselage, but it also allows the gear to fold back into the fuselage into its retracted position. It's called the Trunnion Pin. We teamed up with Zometry to get these made, and they have a cool new feature that they just recently added that I want to show you over at the computer. Here we are looking at the CAD for the Trunnion Pin. We are in Fusion 360. This is the software we use to generate all the tool paths to tell our CNC mill or CNC router how to create the parts and molds for the aircraft. We like to vertically integrate and manufacture as many parts as we can in-house. Uh, the original plan for the trunnion pins was to create them in-house. We are gonna buy an off-the-shelf pipe, cut it to length, and then use the Tormach with a slitting saw to cut these retaining ring grooves in there. Ultimately, we ended up scratching that and outsourcing the part. A while back, we, Riley, River, and I had a discussion of someone creating a integrated feature with your CAD or CAM that could tell you the information you want to know about the manufacturability of your part, cost and lead time on the fly. Turns out Zometry did that recently. I found out about it, had it tried out, and I wanted to show you guys uh, what that was like because we ended up using it for the trending pins and it worked out pretty slick. So you can go to their website, you can download the plugin. I'll leave a link in the description. It's free to download, you don't have to pay for anything. And when you do that um, and add it to Fusion, it'll show up in the tools tab here. So you click on that, it'll pop up. And I was playing with this earlier. So it already selected my part, but you can select your part or parts and then the number that you wanna create. And then you just hit next. And then it'll bring you to step two where you select your process. So this is going to be a lathe component. We're going to CNC machine it. You select your material. I actually want to do 7075 T6 for this. And then you select your uh, finish. So this is just for the prototype. We'll do standard, but there's a lot of different finishing options here. Uh, get estimate, and then it'll do its magic, generating the estimate for the cost and the lead time. And then on top of that, it'll also tell you some tips for manufacturability. So if you have some sort of geometry that might be tricky for it to either machine or 3D print or to create through the process that you select, it'll give you some hints on, on correcting that. So we'll let it do its estimate and there you go. So we've got a cost, we've got a lead time, and then we also have some notes on, it looks like we have some sharp internal quarters that, corners that we might want to take a look at. So I just thought that was really slick and I thought it'd be cool to show you guys one other cool thing. Say we want to change this internal dimension. I can do that, hit refresh, update estimate, and then 
it'll run through the estimate again. I don't have to re-upload the part. I don't have to send a new email. It's just, it takes care of it, gives us a new update. And the value I see in this is a really quick and efficient way to get cost and lead time and then some hints on manufacturability of your component. Once you've settled on this and you think it looks good, you can actually click this button and then it'll pull you to the website and you can upload a print from there and continue the checkout process for your part. I recommend checking it out. I'll leave a link in the description for it. Let's get back to the aircraft and see how things are progressing there. We got the aft skin bonded on and then we proceeded right into cutting the gear doors out. After that we assembled the main gear to the fuselage and then threw the nose gear on there. Everything's looking really good. There's a couple small tweaks we have to make to the cutouts and then after that we're going to be flipping this over and getting the whole thing situated on its gear. We'll save that for the next video and we'll leave it there. Thank you guys so much for watching. We'll catch you in the next one.